John Stewart sat down with Howard Stern, and they spoke about some of the right-wing talk show hosts. So let's listen, and then I want to give you my run-through on the same topic. I love when you have Bill O'Reilly on the Daily Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Has O'Reilly been here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and has he been here? Yes. Yeah, yes. he has. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I don't remember one show from the uh, other. Believe me, I'm the same way. But but I do like this. Uh, you know, I had Joy Behar on the other day, and I yeah, said, yeah. "Why did you walk off the View when you had Bill O'Reilly on? After he was a guest, you play right, along, right, right, and you know, and it's interesting. You have different opinions. Right, right. right. I mean, you have a, a you have a completely different opinion of the world than this guy, but yet yes. you're willing to have fun with him. Well, because it's you don't feel like he's disingenuous. You don't feel like he's you know. He just, I mean, you don't hate him, right? I mean, oh God, no, no. You you respect the fact that he has just a different opinion than you. Yeah, listen. Yeah. You know, the people are saying to me, like, why do you have him on? And you're like, well, right, yeah, we disagree. So why would I ever talk to that guy? I'm like, it's Thanksgiving. When I go home to Thanksgiving, like, there are people in my family that are so right-wing, like, they make O'Reilly look like gay Ralph Nader. Like, it's not, <laughs> you know, the idea that somehow this guy can't be spoken to, it seems insane to it me. But isn't that insane. exactly what's happening in Congress? Oh, but that's a whole other thing. That's but, all. I mean, the incentives with, of Congress, the problem with Congress is, they're incentivized not to get along. Right. So that they have to, for them, it's not that they couldn't get along, it's that they don't want to, because it will, they don't care so much about the country, they care about their party, so they're trying to. But so you, that's so my point, have, it's you, not looking at right. the country and what might be good for the country. That's right. It's looking at my own and looking personal at what interests. Ra what raises money? If, yeah. if you're in Congress, what's going to raise money? We came up with a bipartisan deal on immigration to work together to solve this problem. Can, can you raise money from your base with that? Or can you raise money with your base going, uh, ISIS is coming over the border carrying the pockets yeah. of Ebola? Yeah. And, you know. So, John, when you have um, O'Reilly on, but, but yeah. that's not a personal hatred or anything, but I think you hate Sean Hannity on Fox News, right? Like you I just don't, dislike I don't him. I hate him. I just think he's disingenuous. I, I think that's a real cynical play. What that do you feels mean? like a cynical what, play. What do you mean? You, you don't mean, believe in other his words, politics? You mean, in other words, is he acting a certain way to... Seems like it. Yeah. Seems like it. It's um, because nobody can be that consistent ideologically. What I about agree. Rush Limbaugh? Now, when, I, when I think uh, about Rush yeah, Limbaugh... I think probably more cynical. I, th I think that's a cynical yeah. play. I think the other thing's a cynical play. But when I think about Rush Limbaugh, I've always said this. I say, yeah. how could you always... Be the, have a knee-jerk knee reaction to the Republican. In other words, whatever it is, you have the Republican hardline. Do you ever? Do you ever disagree on abortion? Do you ever disagree on right. gay rights? Yeah, everything is down the line, party specific. Well, it's it's also the difference between sort of being a broadcaster and just being an ideologue. You know, being right. somebody that's working toward a, a pure partisan. Yeah, and that you know the thing about O'Reilly, you always find is, you know, he is thinking about it. And to be honest with you, the way that 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 party's moved to the right. I always view O'Reilly as like a Kennedy Democrat. Like he <laughs> right. strikes me as a Robert Kennedy Democrat. <laughs> he like, can be occasionally reasonable, Catholic, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like right. hardline, old school Catholic, New York. Like that's the type of guy you're like. Yeah, I could see him voting for Robert Kennedy. That's interesting, and that might be true because I've heard O'Reilly say I forget where the interview was, but he speaks about RFK like he's one of his heroes. I know it's a stunning thing to think about because he's. Pretty consistent in his conservative beliefs today. But every once in a while, he'll throw a wrench out there. And people are like, what, what the fuck just happened? That, that wasn't supposed to come out of your mouth. There was one time he said that left-wing groups have a point about uh, protecting Social Security by all means necessary. And he referenced his mother in that conversation and said, if it wasn't for me, she'd be in big trouble. She's 90 years old and she couldn't afford living where she lives right now. And it's a problem. There, at the time, there was a time when he said he supported the public option for health care. That was totally out of the blue. And of course, later, of course, he'll come out and he'll say something that contradicts it and he'll tap dance around it and you name it. But every once in a while, he'll do that. He'll say something that's somewhat reasonable. But let's break this down, the right-wing hosts. Here's your handy guide to right-wing hosts from me. This is my take on it. I think Rush Limbaugh is genuinely dumb. I really think he's stupid. I, I really think he's not bright. I think he has a low IQ, and I think he's always not been very bright, which is why you see that, like they're describing there, he always takes the Republican partisan position, and that's it. The entire formula of his show is that. 
the entire formula of his show is go to Newsmax.com or uh, Daily Caller or World Net Daily, just any of the right-wing blogs, read like a headline and a few lines of an article, and then just say, okay, I'm going to go out there and blame the big bad Democrats, and Obama's a socialist. It's just so boring and so predictable, and everything is always the Republican Party is right. So I really, I just don't think he's smart, I'm being honest. And you'll always hear him make arguments that there's no, there's no logical connection. Like he, it's just verbal diarrhea and different disparate concepts that are, uh, you know, sewn together and it just doesn't make any sense in, in the final summation. When you look at it, you go, that, that doesn't, there's no logic there. So I really think Limbaugh is really, really stupid. And then when you get to Hannity, Hannity, I agree with him. I think he's acting. I've said that for a long time now. I do. And for a similar reason that they say. Because nobody can be that partisan all the time. Where, again, with Hannity, it's similar to Limbaugh. Except with Limbaugh, I think he's dumb and he believes it. And with Hannity, I think he's just acting and being super partisan. Uh, and we'll get to an example of that in a second. But with O'Reilly, I do think out of all the conservative hosts, and I do all think that they do really bad things for the country and they just screw up the political conversation and shift the spectrum to the right, yada, yada, yada. But O'Reilly is the smartest and the best of all of the worst. It's like saying somebody's the tallest kid in kindergarten because none of them are desirable, none of them are good, they're all doing damage to the country. But I think O'Reilly is the smartest and the most savvy and the one who believes it the most out of all of them. Now, also, I'll just throw in this last thing here real quick before I get to a perfect example of the Hannity nonsense. There are people who disagree with me. So, Limbaugh, stupid, Hannity, acting, O'Reilly, smart and genuine, even though we disagree with him 95% of the time. But there are people who disagree with me completely. I had a conversation with David Pakman about this one time. He basically said the opposite about Hannity and O'Reilly. He said that uh, he thinks Hannity is genuine and really believes it, and O'Reilly's the one that's acting. I disagree completely with him on that, but that's his take on it. So there is a, a variety of opinions out there on this. But I'll leave you with this here. Tells you everything you need to know about just how much Sean Hannity is acting. Listen to him. This is the old clip from Media Matters. I love trotting this out all the time. The NSA scandal under George W. Bush versus the NSA scandal under Barack Obama. We know that you're against the NSA data mining. We know that you're against the NSA surveillance program. So the question is, where does the Democratic Party, what will you do if you're elected to power to make our country safer in the war on terror? Specifically, what, do your, what will your party support? Your party brags about killing the Patriot Act. You don't want the NSA surveillance. You don't want data mining. That's we have Pat Leahy saying that he doesn't want a, a NSA surveillance program. Nancy Pelosi, the woman who'd love to be speaker. She's against the NSA surveillance program. Yeah, she, sure. You mentioned that, and you mentioned the very specific things, the Patriot Act, the NSA surveillance program. The party that's weak on national defense, that doesn't want the Patriot Act, the NSA program, the data mining program. Is it right to say that, that for example, on issues involving national security, be it the NSA surveillance program, the data mining program, the Patriot Act, Guantanamo Bay, that Democrats are weak on issues involving national security. When our techniques are working, we've got the NSA program here, we've got the Patriot Act program here. You know, in light of this, how close this was, I, I, it's staggering to me that we're even debating the use of these techniques in this country even at this time. Big Brother is monitoring your every move, whether it be online or on the telephone. Let's talk about why this story, why is this important to you? Number one, this is America, and as law-abiding American citizens, you have a right to privacy. Number two, these actions by the Obama administration are clear, very clear violation of the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable search and seizure. Number three, the Constitution. It is our rule of law. If we do not respect and honor the Constitution, then anarchy and tyranny will there follow.